Hey guys, Two Ton Streamer here, and with the upcoming release of Ark for the Xbox One, I thought we would go over some basic starting tips for getting yourself established on the Ark. Please keep in mind that I am playing the PC version, and there might be some subtle differences, but overall these strategies are the same. So you bought the game, and you are ready to get started in Ark. First things first. What server type do I pick? This will depend largely on your playstyle. If you enjoy going head to head with other players or joining up with a large tribe and collectively going to war against another tribe, then you'll want to pick a PvP server. Just keep in mind that PvP servers are generally better for multiplayer playstyles and solo players will have a more difficult time there. If you enjoy solo play, creative base building, and being left alone so you can become John Hammond from Jurassic Park, and the only threats you have to deal with are from wild dinos, then PvE servers are where you want to be, and for the sake of this tutorial, it's what I will be choosing today. What location to pick? So, you made your character. Did you make him or her look normal, or did you go for that creepy look with the extra long limbs? I myself like to make them a bit short, but with longer limbs and a big head. Call me weird, but it's just what I like. For new players who have never played Ark before, I would go with one of the south or east locations, except for east 2, that one is now the swamp. South 1 or 2 can be quite nice and offer little in the way of really strong predators. My first spawn point is going to be South 1 and that's what I'll be choosing today. I just woke up on a beach almost naked and alone. Now what? This is where things get interesting and where every new player starts out. First thing to do is to know your controls. Moving about is pretty standard stuff. The only controls you really need to learn are run to pick up and use an item and fire. So first you want to run around and start picking things up. Head into the underbrush and bushes and pick up all you can to begin with. You will gain your first couple of levels just by doing this, so run around and when you level it will announce it somewhere on the screen. On the PC version it's up near the top in green letters. Remember not to get too close to any of the wooded areas. Your visibility will be low and some wild predators will come from nowhere and this stage you really cannot fight anything. The first things you need to craft are your basic tools which are your pick and your hatchet. So run around and collect things from the ground and when you come upon a tree you must use your fire button and punch the tree. This will net you wood and thatch. To make your pick you will need one stone, one wood, and ten thatch. Creating this pick will allow you to hit large or small stones and gather flint and stone, but more flint than stone when using the pick, which will be needed for your next tool, the hatchet. Your interface, what does it all mean? Let's talk about the user interface icons that are over on your bottom right of the screen. You have the arrow which fills as you do anything from exploring to gathering to building and pretty much everything else. When the arrow fills, you level. Below that is a weight. It's similar to the two weights in my two-ton streamer logo. When this weight is filled, it means you are encumbered and you cannot move until you either drop items from your inventory or craft something, but we'll talk on that later. Then you have the water drop, which is your thirst. If it runs out, a warning will display on the screen telling you to find water fast. Run over to any water source. Yes, you can even drink seawater without dying. When you are standing in the water, just push your gather button and you will drink automatically. It's so much better than the old days where we had to actually swim to rehydrate, which opened you up to attacks from piranha and sharks. The next icon is your food icon, represented by a piece of meat. Berries you gather can be eaten, but avoid eating the black narco berries as they will knock you out and avoid the white ones as well as they will dehydrate you. The white stem berries can be used later to make a medicine that allows you to keep from being rendered unconscious from certain animals like scorpions and snakes. The next icon is the stamina lightning symbol. If this is empty you can no longer move so try to avoid letting this get depleted. The last icon is the plus sign or health icon. This is where you can see how much health you have. Keep in mind that harsh weather effects like an ice cube or fire symbol showing up in the bottom left of your screen can deplete your health fast. Eating berries will not regenerate your life, but cooked meat will. It'll both satisfy your hunger and allow you to regen a small portion of life. There are potions and different food variations you can make later on which will aid you better, but for now just know that when your life is down, you need to get indoors to get the weather effects off so you can stop losing life. Some areas on the Ark are more dangerous for temperature deaths than others, which is why I suggested starting out in the south or the east, but just know that harsh weather can come just about anywhere and at any time, but it's more sporadic in these areas than in the others. Let's talk about leveling up your stats. So by now you have leveled, yay! It's the first of many. With each level you get to spend an experience point for your physical attributes to make yourself stronger in some key areas. 
to spend your point, go into your inventory character screen, and you should have some flashing plus signs there. Warning, you will be vulnerable on the beach while you are staring at your wrist, so try to make sure that the area is clear of potential threats before you start the screen. So, with the flashing plus sign on your screen, you need to choose one to spend. I recommend putting it in either health or stamina. Weight is another good one you will use and also need early on. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory. Stamina allows you to run longer or to attack and gather longer. If you run out of stamina, your character will stop moving until you recover some back, so keep this in mind. Melee damage will help you later on, but if you are not on a PvP server, it's not something you will want to sink too many points in too early. Fortitude is a good one to have, as it protects you from the elements, which can be hard to maintain until you can make all the proper clothing for yourself. Crafting speed is not something you will want to concern yourself with at first, but if you plan on doing anything with the customized cooking recipe system in later levels, you'll want to consider those then. What has worked for me in generalized stats for the first 20 levels or so is a nice mix of health, stamina, and weight, with a couple of points into fortitude. I generally do not touch melee, food, or water until after level 20. If you are playing on a server with increased gathering, then I'd put more into weight early on. Time to make decisions. So, by going into your view engram screen, which you should be able to get to from your inventory character screen, you'll open up a new screen which should look something like this. Keep in mind that you will never have enough points to unlock everything yourself unless you're on a modded server, which is where being in a tribe comes into play. You will need to choose where to put your points carefully. This is aimed at solo players, so I will tell you what I think your priority should be. Your first engram point should go to the hatchet and spear. That's about all you'll have points for at the moment. When you level again, you should get the campfire. From here, you can decide to either start getting your clothing or research the thatch foundation. I usually choose to start building versus clothing, simply because having a place to hide in can help protect you from not only the weather, but also from the occasional raptor, which can be almost anywhere. Once you spend the points and research an item, it shows up in the craftables tab, which from your character inventory screen is right above your inventory items in the top left portion of your screen. In that craftable screen, you simply hover over the square icon of the item you want to craft, and it'll show you the materials needed. And if you have all required materials, the square will be white. If not, it's red. To begin with, craft your hatchet to collect more wood. Then craft you about three spears as soon as you can. This way, you can start defending yourself from the little dilos that are sure to be close by, and you can also kill a dodo pretty quickly for some hides and meat, which you'll need later on. Gather, gather, build, gather. So, now you have your basic tools and your first weapon. It's time to build some shelter and a base of operations to start out with. You will need to gather fiber from the berry bushes and also thatch and some small amounts of wood. You are probably running into weight issues at this point, so to get around that, you will need to craft. Hopefully you went with the thatch foundation as your engram to research. This not only starts your base out, but crafting them also gives you a good amount of experience. My suggestion is to craft four of these. Six is better, but you might be pressed for time due to a predator approaching, so four is fine for now. As you craft items, especially those used for buildings like foundations, walls, ceilings, etc., you can lose weight. For instance, a stone foundation costs 80 stone, plus some wood and thatch. 80 stone can weigh you down and is 40 pounds all by itself. However, once you craft that foundation, the 80 stone is gone, and instead you only have the weight of the foundation, which is like 4 pounds. So you just went from like 50 pounds worth of materials down to 4 pounds. Keep this in mind later on when you are out and about and you get weighted down. Always look to see if you can craft something before discarding materials. A quick note about stone. You will need a ton of it, but do not really start collecting it until you open up the storage box in Graham at level 3. And as soon as you hit level 3, you need to research this engram and make 2-3 to three storage boxes. Stone weighs you down fast, and even though you can't make a whole lot with it yet, it's good to go ahead and get a jump start on it right away. Here is a pro tip. When choosing where to build, I like to build near some easily recognizable landmark. Once you have that perfect little spot, whether it's at the foot of a hill or adjacent to some nice looking rock formations close by, do not stray too far away until you can create a respawn point for yourself. Building. Is it easy or what? So we now have enough materials to craft our foundation. If you are level 3, then you can also start making the thatch walls, the roof, and the door. 
Now, something to keep in mind when you're placing your foundation is land elevation. You don't want to build where it changes too drastically. Look for low flat surfaces. I try to build near the shore, again for safety and to also possibly create a nice little docking port for the raft you can craft at level 15. So you craft the foundation and then drag it into your toolbar. Then you simply press the button and the hollow image of the foundation appears. Red means you cannot place it and green means you are good to go. Place it and then when you have the others crafted you can place them next to the one that started you out. If the elevation is good they will snap, making placement, <laughs> well, a snap. I'm a level 5. Now what, Kimasabi? The next thing you will want to research will be your bed, which acts as a respawn location for yourself and other tribe members. Otherwise, when you die, you will have to find your way back to where you started building at, and oh yeah, you will be almost naked again without any of that fancy stuff you had crafted for yourself. Earlier, we mentioned building near a noticeable landmark if possible. The art can seem quite big, so respawning at the same location you originally chose when you first entered the game will help you get close, but it's a bit random and you might start a little further away, either north or south or east or west, of your build location than you did originally when you first came in. Hopefully you have not died yet and were able to create that simple bed first. You must research the sleeping bag first, which is a one-time use spawn point. I try not to craft that one and hold on to my hides for the bed, for those of you who were not so lucky, keep in mind that you will need to get back to your base ASAP because your body might still be on the ground and you can loot it. You can also scavenge the meat from your bones, which can be a tasty treat, but odds are the dino that killed you has already enjoyed the snack. In this case, your stuff will be in a brown bag on the ground. Also, you might have to kill said predator before getting your stuff back. Whoa, that's a cool looking dino. Will it kill me? So you are new to the island and the thing that probably drew you here was the fact that dinosaurs are also here. They can be quite awesome, but also a bit scary. Especially if you are not sure which dinos are friendlies and which ones are not so friendly. We recommend keeping a dino dossier webpage handy before attempting to approach, tame, or even kill a dinosaur you are unfamiliar with. In the beginning, if you start out and remain near the beach, you will run into mostly nice dinos. The Triceratops, Parasaurs, and Brontos will only attack you if you attack them. They can be very dangerous though, so do be careful not to accidentally hit them, especially if you are attacking something close by. Another note about dinos is that if you attack a species and more of that species is close by, they will most likely help their brethren. You need to watch out for raptors and dilos. Dilos are small and can be easily killed, but they do spit acid in your face, so timing that to dodge it will help you with the fight. Spears head-on is the best way to fight them, and be careful because they can sometimes have a buddy close by. Raptors are slightly larger than Dilos, and they are nasty in your early levels. I would try to get away from them until you have hide armor and a metal pike, or if you can get up high and out of reach, you can use a slingshot or a bow. That also works. There are some tiny new additions to Ark that you might also not even see, but they are deadly in packs. You will notice these little guys by their tiny size and little plus numbers above their heads when pack mates are close by. Bugs are another concern and can kill you quickly, so beware of them. But they do offer a nice resource called Chitin, so if you happen to kill some, make sure to get that Chitin. Also later on when you can tame a frog, they actually create cementing paste from the bugs they kill, so you'll learn to love bugs. More questions! So, what about taming dinos or using a slingshot? What the heck is a mortar and pestle? Should I get the blood extraction syringe? These are all really great questions and topics we will cover in the next video spanning levels 5 through 10. Until then, I am Two Ton Streamer, hoping that this video has been informational for those of you just getting started in ARC. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And for all your weekly news, we have our W4RK Weekly News Show, where you can catch up on all things ARC related and possibly learn some unsettling things about my family life. So long.